This video is sponsored by Bloodline, Heroes of Lithus. Against a backdrop of Marvel's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania underperforming in theaters, Kevin Feige recently stated that there would be fewer Marvel series on Disney Plus going forward. That, of course, also ties in with Bob Iger's stated intention at the recent earnings call to cut the total pot earmarked for producing Disney Plus content by a whopping 3 billion. The reason for that is simple. Going all in on streaming has so far cost Disney a fortune. Of course, Disney is not the only company to be in that predicament. Everyone who decided to challenge Netflix for the streaming throne have thus far ended up losing on it, and losing big at that. To put it bluntly, Hollywood at large bet the farm on streaming and lost. And what is so ridiculous here is that that loss was entirely predictable and preventable, and we are about to see why. In this editorial, I will begin with a recap on why the streaming wars begun, how Disney's Bob Iger was one of the leading instigators behind it, and finally, how utterly predictable it was that it was going to blow up in everyone's faces. Something else blowing up, only in the best way possible, is the awesome game Bloodline Heroes of Lithos. It looks great, has one of the most unique game mechanics I've ever seen, and it is the sponsor of this video. You have to try this game, and you can do so now, for free, and receive an amazing starter pack while you're at it. Bloodline Heroes of Lithos is a visually stunning hero collector fantasy RPG for mobile devices with realistic 3D graphics, where you build your kingdom and collect champions to defend it and the world. You can collect new characters that are being released every fortnight, but what sets this game apart is that you can customize your own unique champions by marrying any two bloodlines in the game, such as elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, dragonborn, vampires, and more, to create more than 800 possible hybrids, all of which inherit both traits and appearances from their unique family trees, merging them into new combinations. Now, in 2023, all players can enjoy battling in the new Guild War on brand new maps. You can conquer territories with your guild members and claim rewards to create the most unique hybrid champions called Bloodcraft Legends. You can raise hairs with companions, whose genders can freely be switched for greater intimacy and therefore more powerful offspring. Use strategy to build a powerful economy, and that way a powerful kingdom, which will be part of some very interesting storylines. New bloodlines and legendary hybrids are constantly being released into the game, which means that the possibilities are endless for you to seek out the greatest hybrid to suit your style. So download the game now, for free, on both Android and iOS. Use our link in the description, or our QR code on screen, to get an amazing starter pack worth $20, with one summoning crystal, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds. Also, for the next 7 days only, the first 20 players to leave their account ID and username in the comment section will receive a free gift of one of the best champions to carry you in the game, Ugrul, the legendary female orc champion. So click that link and get started now. With that, let's dive into the folly of the streaming wars. Before we go into the streaming wars, let's take a detour back to the past, about two decades back in time. For Hollywood, the early 2000s were in many ways a golden age, if not creatively, then financially, because the DVD format had emerged victorious from a very brief format war with Dibex, so brief in fact that most people didn't even know it happened. And that, no doubt, helped DVD to be adopted by the masses in a way no physical format had ever been before. The days of yore, when Hollywood was reluctant about even letting audiences rent their movies, let alone own them, were momentarily in the rearview mirror, because there was so much money to be had from DVD sales. For a while there, studios could be more risky than they otherwise would, greenlighting movies that wouldn't even have been considered under other circumstances. Because even if those movies bombed in theaters, they could rely on DVD sales to make up the difference. 
If you were a studio executive, life in the early 2000s was as good as it was ever going to be. But technical innovation drove the move from standard to high definition, which in turn made the DVD format obsolete. A new high definition physical format was required, but rather than the industry settling on one format behind closed doors, they decided time was ripe for another format war, this time between Blu-ray and HD DVD, to be fought out in public using early adopters as foot soldiers. And because of that, the masses stayed away, determined to sit this one out till one winner emerged. Mass audiences weren't going to accept needing one piece of hardware to play a movie from Disney and another piece of hardware to play a movie from Universal, yet that was the reality at this time, so most people simply sat on the fence while the format war went on, and it lasted for a long time. Microsoft sided with HD DVD, the losing side, and in my personal opinion, they did so only to prolong the format war and drive more and more customers towards streaming, which is what they were invested in, and that paid off. The Blu-ray vs HD DVD format war went on for way too long, and many who otherwise would have gone with the eventual winner, Blu-ray, instead went for streaming and never looked back. Blu-ray did good, but it never came close to the market penetration DVD once had, and as such, it never became the cash cow for the studios that DVD had been. In no small part, because of the format war between HD DVD and Blu-ray, streaming eventually emerged as the real winner, and an argument can be made that the Hollywood studios were the losers as they lost the cash cow DVD had been and lost out on the opportunity to replace it. Now, you may wonder, what does any of this have to do with Disney Plus? And we are getting there. The moral I want you to take away from this story is that format wars fought out in public, using potential customers as common soldiery and cannon fodder, prevented adoption and backfired on the invested parties. Do you think you can remember that lesson? If so, you are smarter than the average Hollywood studio head honcho. After HD DVD had imploded, DVD sales began to decline, and Blu-ray didn't grow quickly enough to make up for the shortfall. Streaming was taking off in the background, and the emerging king of the streamers was Netflix. In many ways, Netflix was becoming the new DVD. This worked well enough for the studios, because while they didn't earn as much selling their content to Netflix as they did on selling physical media direct to consumers, Netflix still paid them handsomely. It also worked well enough for audiences, as they had quick, easy, and reasonably cheap access to their preferred movies and TV series. But I stress it only worked well enough, because bitrate-starved streams don't carry the same quality as physical media of the same resolution. And with streaming, audiences no longer owned the movies and series they bought. Rental was back, and streamed content, even if you had quote-unquote bought it, could be removed at a moment's notice. Yeah, you had your occasional HBO, but even so, for a while there, Netflix was, for all intents and purposes, the new DVD, the dominant standard on streaming, to the point that even piracy was on the decline. Because what's the point in taking to the high seas when most of the content you'd want is available for a modest monthly fee on Netflix? All in all, while not as good as during the height of the DVD boom, things were going pretty good all around, and they were especially good for Netflix, the emerging standard format for streaming, if you will. They raked in money in subscription fees and paid out handsomely to the studios. Now, all everyone had to do to keep things working as good as they were was to fully consolidate behind Netflix, accepting them as the streaming standard, and then sell their content to them, similar to what was the case with DVD. After all, the lesson from history is that the worst thing anyone could do in this market was to take Netflix on and launch another format war or to update the term for the times to engage in streaming wars.
rather than accept Netflix as the new standard format and then profit from the content itself. The key studio decision makers in Hollywood instead adopted some kind of mass hysteria where they all collectively abandoned all logic and reason and instead adopted the delusion that each and every one of them could become the new Netflix and have as many subscribers as them, or at any rate, the new HD DVD, thinking they could coexist alongside Netflix. Almost every major studio that didn't already have a streaming service adopted one, and the worst in class here were Disney. Bob Iger detailed this in his book The Ride of a Lifetime. He first acquired a company with the infrastructure to make a service like Disney+. Plus. Then he let his division heads know that they were expected to spend every bit as much on Disney Plus programming as they did on theatrical movies. And to make sure that they didn't skimp out in any way, he even guaranteed them bonuses comparable to what they would get for successful theatrical movies, just for making proper, expensive Disney Plus shows. He knew they wouldn't be individually successful on Disney Plus on their own, but each piece of content would be part of the total offering he felt would make Disney Plus a must-have service, just like Netflix. Speaking of, to facilitate that happening, Disney of course would have to remove their content from Netflix and all other streamers, so they could be exclusive to Disney Plus. The thinking was that when the Disney Plus user base approached what Netflix had, it would be all worth it. It seemed like a great plan. What could go wrong? The problem for Disney is that while they were by far the most aggressive, they weren't the only challengers to Netflix throne. As I said already, there seemed to be some kind of mass psychosis going on, where every major studio thought that they, with their exclusive catalogue, somehow could be the new Netflix. Which, obviously, they couldn't, because they only had their own catalogue, and very few customers will restrict themselves to the catalogue of one studio. There is obviously a limit to how many streaming services any one customer will want to subscribe to as well, so already there, those with lesser catalogue will lose out. A very expensive lesson the long since defunct CBS All Access learned the hard way. But Disney, and really all the others who took their content away from Netflix, learned three lessons the hard way. The first was when they gambled so much on day and date releases and streaming exclusives, they cut into their own theatrical revenue. The second was that in order to push their streaming service, they had to cut back on physical media releases, so that was a post-theatrical revenue stream severely crippled. The third was that when they took their content away from Netflix, or indeed any other third party, then those third parties no longer had to pay that hefty licensing fee, so that was another post-theatrical revenue stream cut out altogether. The practical outcome from their streaming drive, then, was that they cut theatrical revenue and killed off the biggest post-theatrical sources of revenue their movies had up until that point. Now, the only way to actually make money on streaming was to get a netflix size install base, which no one were able to. And ironically, Netflix weren't able to keep theirs either. When more and more studios removed their content from Netflix, Netflix was suddenly no longer such an attractive offering, so now audiences started fleeing from them as well. Instead of subscribing to four different services to get the same content they used to get on Netflix alone, more and more former customers and subscribers simply chose to return to the high seas. Thanks to the streaming wars, there was suddenly no shortage of high-quality 4K rips of anything you could want available to anyone who knows where to look. The first one to publicly recognize the futility of the streaming wars was David Saslaw, formerly of Discovery fame. He had, incredibly, managed to make Discovery one of the must-have streaming services, and therefore he was one of the winners of the streaming wars, to the extent of which there is such a thing. When he took over Warner, one of the first things he did was announce that content formerly exclusive to HBO Max would be licensed elsewhere, 
for the unstated reason that they simply couldn't afford the loss of licensing revenue that came with keeping their content to themselves. Months later, the financial trades started reporting that Disney were considering doing the same, which would be a complete reversal of the Disney Plus strategy that Iger invested so heavily in. Indeed, in the February 8th earnings call, Bob Iger had to admit that since the last reporting, Disney Plus had lost more than 2 million subscribers. Granted, that loss was the sum total for the world and driven by India. In the domestic market, 200,000 subscriptions had been gained, but considering the price tag for content such as She-Hulk and Star Wars Andor, even those were abysmal numbers, which essentially meant Disney were flushing money down the drain on making content for a service that may already be in its peak. What is so tragic comic about this is that the end result of the streaming wars was that there would be no real winners among the direct combatants. I mean, it worked well enough for Amazon, but the only studios who made money on the streaming wars were the ones who stayed out of it and kept on selling their catalog to Netflix and others. What is more, this was always an entirely predictable result. We saw it coming five years ago, which was when we first discussed it with Bill Hunt of Digital Bits fame. Alas, those who should have been the most on top of this, and most keenly aware of the history of their industry, weren't. And so, they ended up repeating history. Let that be the final takeaway. Know and learn from history. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. And before you go, remember to download Bloodlines Heroes of Lithus for free using the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen.